Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Roger. It is so nice to be back. Grubus Games Unlimited, Dungeon Crusade. The Avalon Adventure board game, Dungeon Crusade is done. I want to say that first. And it is so nice to be back with you guys. You know I love chatting with you and I am very excited about this this game and definitely the Avalon Adventure board game. So as I call you guys, you're kind of like my extended family and I, I love chatting with you about this. We're going to be talking a lot tonight and I have my trusty pen because I took notes for the first time because I have so much to talk about. So I hope you don't mind. Um, so welcome. I'm sure you remember this room. Um, the charming Leah kind of reorganized it looking very nice indeed. And I'm sure you might remember this table, the war table as I called it. So we brought it back for this very special occasion for the Avalon Adventure board game. Um, I'm going to consult my notes here for a moment. Um, but again, I'm very glad you're here. So do me a favor, relax and get something to drink or a snack and let's play the Avalon Adventure board game. I want to go over a few things first. Well, let me here. Let me put you down here. You can check out the board. And you're going to learn about the battle boards, as I call them. I came up with this term. And um, so we're going to get to all that. There's a couple of things I just want to get to. Um, and as I said, it's nice to be back here because um, I was the way, reason I was away because of this game right here. I'm going to say something. I really have to keep calm with this because I am, I love everything Dungeon Crusade, but this game right here, the Avalon Adventure Board came, I was just very obsessed with, consumed with, and very passionate about. And I really set out to break the mold of kind of like, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know really, I guess this is like a choose your own adventure, exploring, dungeon delving type of board game. I don't know. I think it's very innovative, and I think you're really going to love it. And I really turned on the faucet of creativity, and this is highly thematic. You know, I, I wrote some really good stuff. Um, up there is the adventure cards. We're going to go over a few of those. You know, of course, we're going to play a demo of the game for you. And um, I'm just excited. This is, I loved playtesting this game. This was so much fun, and... I got it just right for us. I went the extra mile to make sure this is absolutely perfect. Um, so other thing, um, I got to get to your comments. I want to say thank you. A lot of um, Real Taramit and 911 Gargoyle and Michael and um, Andrew Mitchell. You guys left some very, uh, and others, you left some very nice comments. So thank you. I'm glad that you're enjoying this. And I think you're going to, Enjoy this even more when you see how this is played. So, I want to say that. Um, as I said, Dungeon Crusade is done. This is it. This was the, the grand finale, and I think this was a nice grand finale to end um, on Dungeon Crusade. I'll move you and check out the battle boards, as I call them. Um, so, yes, this is the grand finale. This, is, this completes Dungeon Crusade, or the vision that I had for you for this game. What comes now is that um, we're at the end. We're going to do final play testing. We're going to just tie up some loose ends. Um, I have to put the stats on the heroic and the expert difficulty monster cards. So it's some small stuff. But then, of course, the rule book. I have to make the revisions to the rule book. So I don't think that should take that you know much time at all. I'm going to be very quick. But again, I, I'm not going to rush this because I know we're all looking forward to this. And I want this right as rain for you guys. So that's what we're going to be doing now that Dungeon Crusade is all complete. There's no more development. There's no more, you know, creative things to make. The game is fully done. Thank the gods of Avalon for that. Um, so what I want to go over too is that, I guess I want to say this too. I'm going to put you back over here. Is that I think there was some misconcept um, or, you know, misconceptions about this game and there's nothing wrong with that because I think that some people thought this was just brought in but no this has been in my vision for Dungeon Crusade since the beginning even when you know this was on Kickstarter there was the very rough prototype I did um, th so this game has always been in there but I think some people are unsure how to play it so we're gonna play of course a demo and we're gonna see what happens and I'm gonna explain to you you know how all of this plays 
Um, another thing is, oh, this is the prototype. So the cards, of course, this is just prototype stuff that I'm using. Um, you know, this is not the final stuff. But of course, art is but like the material, rather. So I think you guys know that. Another thing I get a lot of questions about, what pledge level do you have to be at to receive the Avalon Adventure board game? There's three pledge levels, the Knight of the Realm, which is the base edition. Still, you get a ton of content in that. The Crusader of the Realm edition, and then Master of the Realm. If you have the base edition, um, I think that's $95, right? That does not include the Avalon Adventure board game. The Crusader of the Realm, that's I think 120, gets you the Avalon Adventure board game. And um, so basically it's like a $25 increase in your pledge, but you get, I, I assure you, after these videos, I think you're going to really enjoy what you're going to see. I put a lot of heart and soul into this game for you. So I wanted to say that. So if you have the base edition, again, just, you know, my job as the creator, I don't, I never push pledging on people ever. I'll never do that. My job is to show you everything I can about the game so you can make a well-informed and comfortable decision if you'd like to pledge. Then even if you don't, if we get to be friends over it, then that's all good with me. Um, so what we're going to do is um, go to um, a demo of this game, and um, I'm going to show you how it plays. I think what we're going to do first, though, is I want to just kind of do like a, a, a small overview of what some of this stuff is and explain to you, you know, how this, how this game is played. Um, so hopefully you followed all that. I was jumping around on my note sheet, so um, I hope that you followed that. So let's get into the Avalon Adventure board game and how this is played. I want to say also, this can be played as a standalone. And I have a big announcement at the end of all this I want to tell you. I'm very excited to tell you. I knew this was always going to happen, but I'm going to say it officially now. You can play this as a standalone game. You know, so if you just want to try your luck and get through the land of Avalon, because I put a ton of stuff in here. I mean, there's 259 pieces of creative writing, and every place that you see, like Sanctum of Dread, that's it's a really nasty place. I promise you. Runes of Ash and Fall, the Village of Deadwood. Um, I put so much lore into this game. Um, I was very descriptive. Um, you know, it's like what I think is just as I've gotten older that visuals don't really stick in your mind. I mean, some of them do. But when you read stuff, and it's, it's something especially as we're into this kind of stuff, especially when it's very thematic, I think the words stick with you. And so that's when I, when I wrote this or created all of this stuff, that's what I want you to take away from this. So when you, after you play this, which we're getting to, when you go to play Dungeon Crusade, I want you to kind of remember, say you went, you explored the Ruins of Ash and Fall, and there's some nasty stuff in there. Maybe you'll remember that, but there's also good stuff, okay? Um, we're going to get into the balance that I have in this game. So um, I kind of derailed a bit, but that's what I wanted to say. I, every location, basically, I got very thematic about like down here at the um, tomb of Emperor Sylvian and the ruins of Rashal, we see that's a very desert-like area, very barren, arid, the crags. So it's going to describe some things that could happen in this kind of area. Well, up here around the village of Towel and White Run Chapel and Logan's Tower, um, Dungeon of Daggereth, that's you can see there's snow there. So I wrote very thematically about you know like the ice and the snow and some of the things that'll happen. Um, some of the creepy forest, but you get the picture, okay, of like what I'm, you know, I just, I got very thematic in the witch house, wait till you get to the witch house, and the vile tower, I loved, love creating this game. Okay, so now we're going to go to the overview real quick, um, so I got a few minutes before the 12 minute mark, let's go over how you play this, as I said, you can play this as a standalone, but the way that is intended to, intended to play, you play this before playing Dungeon Crusade, okay? There's two ways to start Dungeon Crusade. Um, when you pick a scenario from the book, let's say that you, you don't have, you, you're not going to play the Avalon Adventure board game. 
I think you should play this, though, because I think you'll really enjoy it. Say you just want a quick game of Dungeon Crusade. That's not a problem. The heroes get a shopping phase in the village, you know, where, they, where they're going to be getting a random amount of gold, and then you shop for stuff in, in the village, and then you start Dungeon Crusade. This way, when you play the Avalon Adventure board game, the heroes start up here in Hope's Reach, and they have to, rec they have to get the, the three runes of eternity, which I have them right here, I believe. Because the way that I wrote the story, if you saw the video, you know, Father Jova tells the heroes that they have to recover the three runes of eternity, which will shatter the curse on the dungeon doors, allowing the heroes to enter and vanquish, you know, and basically try to complete all the quests and beat the scenario. So the thing is, when you play, and we're going to get into these blue runes, I've not told you about these yet, so they're very cool what happens when you find one. So what happens is, you start at Hope's Reach, and I want to say this also, no two games are ever the same. During playtesting, I would go, I took the same route. It was never the same game. That's something also I wanted to accomplish for you, to give you tons of replayability with this. So you start at Hope's Reach, and you have to traverse the land of Avalon with all the stuff that could happen. Good stuff, bad stuff, maybe neutral stuff. And then you have to recover the three runes to shatter the curse in the dungeon doors and traverse back to Hope's Reach. Okay, I'm going to leave it for this for now. When we come back, we're going to continue. And then I think next video we're going to get into the demo of it. So I will talk to you in a few.